Mansa Musa, C1280-C1337, and the Mali Empire. During the 14th century, Europe was not the place to search for one of the wealthiest empires worldwide. Instead, one would have ventured to West Africa, specifically the Mali Empire. Encompassing vast stretches of land, this empire possessed immense quantities of gold. Today, its territories are part of several modern nations, including Mali, Senegal, Guinea, Mauritania, Gambia, Burkina Faso, and the Ivory Coast, among others. The empire gained recognition beyond Africa through the remarkable expeditions of one of its greatest leaders, Mansa Musa, who later served as an inspiration for Marvel's Black Panther and the fictional nation of Wakanda. How did the Mali Empire begin? Similar to the patterns of numerous empires throughout history, the Mali Empire had its origins in conquest. This narrative unfolds through the renowned epic of Sundiata, recounting the tale of Sundiata Kieta, the esteemed founder of the Mali Empire. Sundiata was born into the Mandinka royal lineage, with a prophecy foretelling his destined greatness as an emperor. However, upon his father's demise, the throne was usurped by Sundiata's brother. Consequently, Sundiata was compelled to seek refuge at the court of the king of Mema, who recognized his potential and appointed him as a valued advisor. Meanwhile, the Soso Empire launched an invasion and subjugated the Mandinka people. Faced with this dire circumstance, the Mandinka turned to Sundiata for assistance. Despite his tender age of 18, Sundiata rallied an army from Mima, and around the year 1235, achieved a momentous triumph at the Battle of Kiriana. As a result, Sundiata Kieta ascended to the title of Mansa, or Emperor, establishing the Mali Empire. His remarkable prowess on the battlefield earned him the moniker, the Lion King. With Sundiata at its helm, the Mali Empire expanded its dominion by conquering various territories, transforming his realm into a formidable and grand empire. This map shows the size of the Mali Empire over a modern map of Africa. How did the Mali Empire work? Sundiata Kieta convened a significant gathering known as the Gibara, wherein representatives from each clan were summoned. During the Gibara, long-lasting laws were established to govern the empire for centuries. These laws encompassed measures to prevent the mistreatment of slaves and prisoners, as well as the clear definition of land ownership among different clans. Furthermore, standardized prices for goods across the entire empire were established. The Gibara served as a platform for ongoing discussions and debates regarding laws that would impact the entirety of the empire. Why was the Mali Empire so rich? The Mali Empire possessed abundant resources within its land. It boasted three extensive gold mines, with all the gold under the ownership of the Mansa, its ruler. At its zenith, the empire controlled nearly half of the world's known gold reserves. Additionally, Mali was endowed with significant copper mines, often operated by numerous enslaved individuals. These valuable resources played a crucial role in transforming the Mali Empire into a bustling trading center. Moreover, Mali enjoyed substantial reserves of salt, a highly prized commodity in Africa, particularly in desert regions. Salt held great importance due to its ability to preserve food in hot climates and during long journeys. In certain parts of Africa, salt was incredibly scarce. Consequently, merchants in Mali amassed considerable wealth through the lucrative salt trade. The Mali Empire between Sundiata and Musa Around 1255, Sundiata passed away. Subsequently, his son, Ali Keita, established trade connections with the Middle East. Following Ali Keita's demise, a civil war erupted among his adopted brothers, which concluded in 1275 following their deaths. The Gabara, a governing council, carefully selected individuals deemed most suitable to assume the position of Mansa for the next 35 years. Their choices proved to be astute as these mansas played a pivotal role in expanding and enriching the empire, augmenting its power. In 1310, Mansa Abubakari Keita II ascended to the throne. Intrigued by exploration, he nurtured a profound desire to discover new lands beyond the Atlantic Ocean. In 1311, he abdicated his reign to personally lead a massive expedition comprising 2,000 ships across the sea. 
Regrettably, he never returned, though there were reports suggesting that he had encountered the New World and opted to remain there. If indeed true, it would have transpired over 165 years prior to Christopher Columbus's famous voyage. Who was Mansa Musa? Mansa Musa I, after being chosen as successor, embarked on a conquest that resulted in the acquisition of 24 new cities and their respective territories, expanding the empire's domain. It was during his reign that the gold mines reached their peak productivity, with all the gold being under his ownership. This accumulation of wealth positions Mansa Musa Warst as a contender for the title of the wealthiest individual in history. In fact, some experts estimate his wealth to be nearly $400 billion in today's currency, surpassing the combined wealth of figures like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. However, Mansa Musa's greatness as a ruler did not solely stem from his immense riches. He was known for his wisdom and generosity, fostering the prosperity and power of the empire to levels previously unseen. He actively encouraged trade, prioritized education and infrastructure development, and acted as a patron of the arts. Driven by his devout Muslim faith, Mansa Musa believed it was his duty to establish a powerful, peaceful, and prosperous empire. This zeal led him to forcibly convert some regions to Islam, although it should be noted that his methods were not always peaceful. Despite his significant achievements, it is important to acknowledge that Mansa Musa allowed the continuation of slavery within his empire and even owned thousands of slaves himself. Many of these enslaved individuals toiled in the very mines that generated his immense wealth. Mansa Musa improves the empire. Mansa Musa undertook the construction of mosques and madrasas, educational buildings similar to schools, throughout his kingdom, contributing to the development of his cities. In his palace, he enhanced the living conditions by erecting a splendid hall of audience adorned with golden-plated window frames. To ensure exceptional architectural designs, Musa enlisted the expertise of architects from Spain, sparing no expense. Upon incorporating Timbuktu into his empire in 1325, Musa brought about a complete transformation of the city. Notably, he erected the renowned Jingwareber Mosque, which remains standing to this day, establishing it as a symbol of architectural excellence. Furthermore, he laid the foundation for the University of Sankor, which emerged as one of the preeminent centers of Islamic scholarship globally. This esteemed institution housed distinguished scholars who imparted knowledge in various disciplines, including law, astronomy, and medicine. By the end of Musa's reign, the university boasted an impressive enrollment of 25,000 students and possessed one of the world's largest libraries, housing over a million manuscripts. By leveraging his influence, Musa elevated the Mali Empire, particularly Timbuktu, into a prominent trading hub. Merchants from diverse regions, encompassing Africa, the Islamic world, and even European cities such as Venice, converged to engage in prosperous trade at this bustling location. Mansa Musa comes to the attention of the whole world. Mansa Musa embarked on a significant journey to the Middle East, marking his historical prominence. In 1324, Musa undertook a pilgrimage to Mecca, the revered epicenter of Islam. The arduous expedition spanned a distance exceeding 4,000 miles. Musa's entourage consisted of an extensive retinue, including 60,000 men, among them 12,000 slaves. Accompanying them were numerous caravans, horses, camels, and an astonishing abundance of gold that is difficult to fathom. Musa's objective was to bring widespread recognition to his empire during the course of his travels. Along his journey, he generously distributed gifts of gold to the destitute. In Egypt, his benevolence was so extensive that it caused a decline in the value of gold. Eyewitnesses who encountered Musa were astounded by his opulence and authority. Consequently, the Mali Empire became internationally renowned, finding its place on global maps, while merchants from the Mediterranean sought their way to its lands. This pilgrimage not only solidified the Mali Empire's standing as a significant power, but also facilitated the infusion of new architectural styles and influences into the empire, supporting Musa's ambitious construction endeavors. The Mali Empire After Musa 
Musa passed away around 1337, and he was succeeded by his son, who unfortunately squandered a significant portion of the wealth accumulated by Musa. In 1341, Musa's brother, Suleiman, assumed the throne and faced the challenging task of rebuilding the depleted treasury. Although he was regarded as frugal compared to his brother, Suleiman played a crucial role in fostering the prosperity of the empire. Notably, the renowned Islamic writer Abu Abdallah ibn Battuta traversed through the empire during Suleiman's reign, and his widely read book documented his experiences. However, the subsequent Mansus, emperors, encountered less favorable outcomes. Starting from 1389, the Mali Empire experienced the rise of tyrants, ineffective Mansas, and internal conflicts, leading to its gradual decline. The empire lost control over significant territories and resources, resulting in a contraction of its trade. Ultimately, the Mali Empire's existence was not sustained. Nevertheless, during its zenith, it stood as one of the world's wealthiest and most formidable empires ever witnessed.